From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Vic Porter, Mr. Dollar. Hi. Did you check on Dr. Shepard? Yeah. Uh, do I write up his policies? Well, that's up to you, Mr. Porter. Dr. Shepard's life has been threatened. What? That's according to him. And the man who threatened his life has definite homicidal tendencies, also according to Dr. Shepard. Well, I... I... Well, what do you think? Porter, I think Dr. Shepard's a liar. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Richard Porter, 480 Webster Boulevard, Providence, Rhode Island. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Shepard matter. More expenses, item three, 26 cents, one bottle of aspirin for Mr. Porter. I felt he was going to need it. I hope you aren't trying to be funny, Mr. Dollar. I'm not, Mr. Porter. I think you've got a tough decision to make. I, uh, I know that the commission on $80,000 worth of insurance would be high. Uh, uh, sit down. Oh, thanks. Uh, Mr. Porter, Dr. Shepard told me he bought or tried to buy all that insurance because he thought a man named Forbes was going to kill him. He bought it, he said, to make certain his mother is well provided for. He was carrying a thirty-two Colt. Mm. Now, he spoke of treating Forbes' wife and of advising her that divorce would settle her health problem. Mr. Forbes didn't like that and accused Shepard of trying to wreck his home, and, well, that's about it. Now, what have we got? <laughs> Well, your Dr. Shepard is either nuts or an idiot or the cleverest man alive. I don't know. I do know I believed about one half of what he told me. Maybe less. Well, what reason would he have to lie? Beats me. If someone threatened your life or mine, we'd turn to the police for help. Now, Shepard won't do that. Insists that it would probably be hazardous in the case of his patient, Mrs. Forbes. Well, I don't want to write up this policy if what he says is true. But I, I don't want to pass up the commission if it isn't true. Can you stick around town for another day or two and find out about it? I'll do what I can, Mr. Porter. Go ahead. Have an aspirin. He had an aspirin and I had a car ride. Once again, out to the offices of Dr. Shepard. The same things were more or less going on in the same way. His nurse, Miss Streeter, appeared as distraught as ever when she recognized me. There was a quick dabbing at the eyes, a straightening of the hair before she spoke. I... Good morning, Mr. Dollar. Hello. I'd like to see the doctor again. He was calling Mr. Porter's office trying to locate you... I'll buzz him. Mr. Dollar, do you have anything to do with why Doctor's been carrying a gun? No. That's his business. In other words, I should mind my business. Well, I'm being honest. I've advised him what to do on the matter. What matter? He'll have to explain that to you, Miss Streeter. It doesn't make much sense to me. You can go back now. Okay, thanks. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Hello, Doctor. You were pretty insulting yesterday. I'm sorry about that, but we both have a problem to solve. And I get paid sometimes for deliberately insulting people. <laughs> You're a strange one. You want to change your story about all this? I wish I could change it. It's still a mess, a bad mess. I thought it all out last night, and I still must hold to my original thinking. I have to place my concern for my patient, Mrs. Forbes, before anything else. In other words, you won't call the police and tell them your life's been threatened. No, and you're very stubborn about that part. I don't think you comprehend the situation at all. Look, wait a minute. Let's understand each other, Doctor. If this man Forbes is all you say he is, and you say you're the expert on homicidal tendencies, then the best thing for you to do is to prefer charges against him for threatening your life and have him locked up. Now, you could do that, according to what you've told me about Mrs. Forbes and a servant in their home witnessing his threats. I will try to explain again. I can't do that for Mrs. Forbes' sake. I just can't. She's been through a shattering ordeal. I must attempt to resolve this quietly. Now, true, I can generally anticipate a man's actions inside my office under clinical conditions, but I... Well, Forbes is different. That's why I tried to contact you today. Someone like you could approach Forbes and possibly persuade him to discard his ideas of violence. Probably do it in a quiet way, too. What does Mr. Porter pay you? Well, what's that got to do with it? I'm willing to pay you. I mean, you and I don't seem to get along very well, but I phone Porter and he tells me you're one of the best men in your line of business. I'll pay you to go to Paul Forbes and talk to him as I've described. 
I can't figure you, Doctor. Now, let you and I not get into any personality arguments. Will you do this for me for your regular fee? I was going to do it anyhow. For Mr. Porter and the fee, he pays me. I just wanted to check you first. I'll do it. But I still think it's a matter for the police. All right, let's leave it this way. You go talk to Forbes. If you think he means to kill me, then I'll call the police and prefer charges against him, patient or no patient. How's that? That sounds a little more sensible, Doctor. I took down the home address of Paul Forbes and climbed to my rented car and drove over to his home in the gilded edge of the city. A story and a half colonial with all the trimmings. Lawns, trees, Plymouth convertible, a push-button station wagon in the garage. It was a nice warm spring day and some flowers were blooming and smelling up the area in a very nice way. Flies buzzed, bees droned, birds sang. And I went up and pressed the doorbell. I should have gone butterfly catching or taken a plane to Spokane. Yeah? I'm looking for Paul Forbes. Does he live here? Yeah, he sure does. I'm Forbes. Mr. Forbes, my name is Johnny Dollar. Dollar? Yeah, and I came over to talk to you... You get out of my way! The front of his gun slapped against the side of my head and I went down to my knees. A door slammed somewhere and someone ran away. I twisted around trying to see what it was all about. And then I managed to get to my feet in time to see Paul Forbes plunging the Plymouth out the driveway and heading I don't know where. Oh, oh. My goodness, my goodness. What happened here? Uh, Where's Mr. Forbes? You hurt? Yeah, I'll be... Oh, Miss Forbes, Miss Forbes. Hey. Oh, let me help you, sir. Yeah, give me your arm. Yeah. We better sit you down over here. Okay, thanks. Oh, my thanks. goodness, my goodness gracious, sir. How did this happen? Mr. Forbes swung a gun at me. Oh, no, sir, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. No, easy, sir. Easy, easy. Nice, nice. Now, let's sit down here. Oh. Oh. What happened here? I'm afraid Mr. Forbes attacked this gentleman, Miss Forbes. Call the doctor up and then go to my medicine chest and get some swabs and a pan of cold oh, water. Right away, ma'am. Wait, uh, the doctor isn't necessary. He just made me dizzy. You're cut. It might be deep. Well, get the first aid things and some brandy, Upton. Right away, ma'am. This is unforgivable, just unforgivable conduct. Please, I don't know who you are. Are you a friend of Paul's? No, I'm Johnny Dollar. I, I wanted to discuss with your husband and something. I, I take it you're Mrs. Forbes. Yes. Oh, Upton, uh, set them right here. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. You feeling a little better, sir? I, I don't know yet. <clears throat> hey, let me try some of that. Yes, yeah, certainly, sir, certainly. There we go, sir. Uh, Easy now. Easy. <laughs> Thanks. How does it look to you, Upton? Well, I believe it's not too deep, Mrs. Forbes. How's it feel, Mr. Dollar? No, I, I don't think it's very deep. I'll be all right in a minute. Upton, go telephone Dr. Shepard and tell him to come over here immediately. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Dollar, I can't tell you how sorry I am for this. You, you can bring suit against us. You can do anything you want to, Mr. Dollar. Paul's temper is just ungovernable these days. He could have killed you. He took the car and ran. Yeah. I don't know what's gotten into him. Two nights ago, he attacked my personal physician, threatened to kill him. And now he's attacked you for no reason at all. Any idea where he might have gone? Heaven only knows. Mad. That's what he is, Mr. Dollar. He's mad. Pauline Forbes had a right to be scared from what I'd seen of her and from what I'd seen of her husband. He was an angry man with a gun in his hand, slugging at anyone in sight. She was a distraught woman with a darkening spot underneath her right eye, and it wasn't mascara. I began to wonder who needed more looking after. Dr. Shepard, Mrs. Forbes... Or Johnny Dollar. Now, you just lie still now, sir. Uh, well, I guess you kind of fainted a little bit. Is there anything I can get you, sir? No. No, uh, just tell me about Mr. Forbes. I beg your pardon, sir? Look, I'm an insurance investigator. I came here today to talk to Mr. Forbes about threatening Dr. Shepard's life. Oh, uh, well, I, I wouldn't want to talk out of turn, sir. You... You'd better discuss that with Ms. Forbes. Now, just one question. Did Mr. Forbes threaten Dr. Shepard's life? Yes, sir. You heard him? I did, sir. He attacked Dr. Shepard here two nights ago. Did he also attack Mrs. Forbes? Mr. Dollar, this is an unhappy house. Things have gone all wrong here these last few months. Mr. Forbes changed. Ms. Forbes, uh, well, I don't know. I, but please... Don't ask me to speak up against anyone. I'm just trying to find out the best thing to do for everybody concerned. What can you do, sir? Well, I didn't think anything like this would happen. It's terrible, Doctor. 
terrible. Just about settles it. Now, I want you to go up to your room and lie down. There's no sense in your getting any more excited. I want to see about Mr. Dollar first. Oh, good morning, Doctor. Hello, Upton. Uh, let's have a look at this, Dollar. Uh, get that light. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. How is it? Well, I don't think it's anything worse than a cut. How do you feel, Dollar? Oh, an aspirin might straighten me out. I hope so. Captain? Yes, I'll get some, sir. <laughs> Dollar, I should have taken your advice yesterday. I'm going to take it now. I'm going to call the police and have this man arrested. He might kill somebody next time. Yeah, am I all right? Sit up. Dizzy? Yeah, a little. That'll wear off. What will they do to Paul? Well, they'll take him into custody and probably talk some sense to him. Oh, this, this is awful. You go up to your room now, Mrs. Forbes. We'll handle this. Oh, Upton, uh, take Mrs. Forbes upstairs. Yes, sir. You just come along, Miss Forbes. Thank you. She is not a well woman. She looks all right to me. I wish she were. Uh, I'm going to get an x-ray on that head. Can you come by the office this afternoon? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Give me the police. I doubt if it's concussion or anything like that, but it's best to play safe. You're a safe player all the time, aren't you, Doctor? What does that mean? I don't know. Now, look here. I'm not... Hello? Uh, Yes. I want to talk to somebody about a threat on my life. I... My name is Shepard. Dr. Charles Shepard. When I left him, he was reporting Paul Forbes to the police. He gave them Forbes' description and the license number of the Plymouth Forbes was driving. I didn't stay beyond that. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should never have left that house. I'm not sure, but if I hadn't left, I might have saved a life. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... Well, the big lie is as true as little green apples. Join us, won't you, when I bite into one and spit out a bullet. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>